So now you know, um, you know, it is not good enough, obviously, that we get all the validations and all of these breakthroughs um, to keep them in the publications. We, we see so often that, um, you know, in the university shelves, we have so many cures, we have so much data, we have so much validation to say how we can be a healthy society. Um, and so we are geared toward making sure that we make commercial products that are available to the parents, to the children. Um, I myself have gone through an illness where Western medicine didn't know what to do with me. And I um, found a neurosurgeon in Missouri who taught me how to heal myself. And it was through food and it was through different measures. Um, and so by implementing those things, I've been contemplating how we get these things out to other families. Um, you know, my doctor said they were walking me to my grave and I had a declining position. And I wasn't willing to accept that. So by taking my own power into my hands and taking all of this data and all of this information and, and living it, I'm not sick anymore. <laughs> I'm obviously, I'm here. Um, so I started thinking, how, how do we get families, um, you know, children where they're not visiting their parents' grave, that they have their parents for long term? How do we help these things that seem to be incurable and unfixable like autism and Alzheimer's and all of these other things that are not responding to the physical immune system. Um, we've been talking to an immunologist in um, California who has discovered what's called the alternative cellular energetic pathway. And that responds to what, what we know as sacred water, like in the sacred springs of California or um, water comes out of Mount Moriah. And so now we have a technology where we can develop that type of water um, for illnesses and ailments. So things of that nature, um, just to make it a commercial product still is not enough. Because if those parents and those families can't find that facility or um, can't afford that modality or whatever that method is, it's not fair that we're still a sick society. So we um, then have been looking into getting into the school system cafeterias, getting into the incarceration center cafeterias. If we get to the masses and heal the masses at the level of the most sick, the homeless shelters, these people have illnesses that they're not aware of. And if we can get these people off of medications and off of um, where they don't require surgeries and things of that nature, it would be a beautiful thing for our society. So. While we are making commercial products so that we can, one, make these things available to families so we can start healing people up, two, that be makes an avenue for philanthropic pathway so people who can't afford those things, we can um, help heal them up. But still, that's the crisis model of medicine that we currently have. If we start at the same time, bridge the gap over to this preventative model, and we take decades of data of Dean Ornish data, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, that says if we do an all vegan diet, organic food, in 30 to 90 days, I am turning off all of the DNA that says you've got something wrong with you. And I'm turning on all of the DNA that is good for you. So we are literally reversing illnesses, reversing diagnosis, giving you symptomatic relief, getting you off of medications just by implementing an organic, vegan food model. If we do that in the school systems, how many children are we, we helping just by feeding them? And we've got the, the programs in place to feed the hungry. You know, we, we did this in a way back when we had depleted our soil from the organic soil and we had the dust bowl and all of these things. So as leaders of the people, we had to come together and say, we've got to avert crisis here. We're, we've got famine. I mean, talk about Joseph in the days of Egypt, right? If we talk about a historical event where there was famine coming and the leaders listened to someone that had resolution on behalf of the whole nation, we know historically that that famine never came. That crisis never happened. So right now we're not only in crisis, but we're in growing crisis. We know that Medicaid dollars are unsustainable. We know that Medicare and all these unemployment, all of this is unsustainable. But if we look back to when we depleted our soil and we were facing a famine crisis to come, we had to implement a way to feed more people 
And for food to um, stay on the shelves longer, we could ship ac across the nation and feed our people. We did a good job. We did a good thing. So we prevented a crisis of famine. But now what we know decades later is that we created another crisis on top of it unintentionally. And these exposures to the chemicals we're using, the exposures to certain things are creating this ridiculous rise in childhood cancers, ridiculous rise in young people dying, leaving their kids behind. So now if we go back to, we've, we've replenished our soils. In North Carolina, we've got more organic soil in North Carolina than like the top 3% in the world. We, we've got organic soil here, we can do that. So if we implement a model where, where we are feeding the nation, we're healing a nation, and then what does that look like to our tax dollars? When, when at the same time while we're healing people, unemployment rate goes down, we've got more people working, then tax dollars being spent because more people are spending money, and we've got more well people. So at the socioeconomic level of violence, how many people are incarcerated, how many people are repeat incarcerated, um, repeat incarceration, <laughs> repeat offenders, excuse me. Um, all of those things go down just by implementing this simple thing. So it is, it is well and wise that we have to implement commercial products in order to get people well. But it's also well and wise that we, as the leaders, if we've got the data that says this thing is not well for you and this thing is well for you, we don't just leave it up to the people to make that happen. Look at our school systems. We've, we don't leave it up to running a nation, but the parents are gonna educate their kids. We have a school system that the government provides for to make sure that we've got enough workers to run the nation. While we're feeding those people, we're actually keeping them sick by the food that we're feeding them unintentionally. We're doing the right things to feed them, but we're keeping them sick. So what does that mean of a nation when all of these generations have come up on these particular chemicals and now they're not well enough to work. They're not well enough to do, to do the things that we need to run the nation. So if we use the programs that are in place to do it differently, the, the mindset is right, the implementation is wrong. If we can just switch that one little thing, we can make that different. So as the leaders of the data, if we've got that information and we don't implement it, we are doing a great disservice to our children to the parents, to our grandparents, to our family members, because we are keeping ourselves sick. But if we know how to change that, and it's so simple, then we can utilize things like the company we have, the collaborative partners that we have, and we glean off our revenue into these programs and these projects. So putting together all these projects as a community initiative, because again, I'm not gonna stop with commercial, it's got to be outreach into the community. We've got to be out with the people. It doesn't stop in this building. We have got to filter out into these homes. We've got to filter out. And if our motto is food is medicine, and we truly believe that, we will use food as medicine in our schools and in our incarceration facilities and in the places where the people need it the most, we will do that. And if this city motto is come be healthy with us, and that is a good thing, then indeed, come and be healthy with us. As we glean some of our revenue into these projects collectively, then we can make a well people. And when we make our community well, that becomes a template, not only for our state and for our nation, but it really becomes a template for the world, how we can change this iceberg that we are full speed ahead looking into, right? So um, that's kind of where we're going with it all. We have created a website that, um, Lindsay, do you have that up? Um, kind of will keep you up to date. It's really hard. We have meetings all the time. And I talk to doctors and scientists and PhDs and all kinds of things. Um, it is so hard to bring everything we're involved in, all of the community outreach projects, all of the different companies that are collaborating with us. It's hard to have that conversation. It's like, I mean, Daryl, when we had our meeting and we had a, an hour and a half meeting and it's like, drinking from a water hose. You cannot get it all down in one place. So I thought about creating a pamphlet or you know all these different things. We decided we were gonna make a website. And on this website, it, it is just going to be a weekly update on what we're doing, bringing um, different initiatives, different things together. 
and how you can be involved or look into being involved further. So after you leave here, if you keep up with this website, it's going to let you know all things Coddle, all things Bright Path Labs, all things Iramed, all things City of Kannapolis, all things school systems, all things that we're involved in as we move forward. And so we'll just give you a little clip here. What's important today is, first of all, if we don't dream big, we don't have big impact. So we've got to dream big and we've got to be a collaborative people. We've got to all come together and do it because everybody has their part. So the website Natural Exchange, the intention of that is really the natural exchange of these collaborative efforts between communities, different industries, and different types of people. When people are informed, they make more informed decisions. We all have our opinions about certain things, and opinions are good. But if we haven't been exposed to particular data, if we haven't been exposed to certain experiences, then we may have our opinions, but that may be a limited opinion. If we give them then the data or validation around certain things, then we can have a more informed discussion. We're the leaders of the voiceless who are in their homes, who don't have the ability to the reach of city council or city hall or Washington DC or whatever type of leadership we're in. We're the voice to what seems to be the voiceless. And we say, this is what's good on behalf of all of us, the masses. And the Natural Exchange website brings us together. It really allows our technology of today to amplify the message. So we wanna, again, Thank all of you for being here. Um, again, this is going to be a website where it will be updated weekly with different things we were involved in throughout the week um, and um, how you can get involved. So thanks so much for being here. Again, the honey on the table, take that home with you. And um, we um, have just very much enjoyed you. We couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you for being here.